American sports differ vastly from European sports. And by the way, when I say European sports, I'm mainly referring to soccer, or what they call football. However, it can also apply to rugby, basketball, and hockey. Here are five reasons why European sports are better than American sports. Number one, the draft. Let's be honest, the draft is just stupid. Why should teams be rewarded for failure? Look at the Astros and Cubs in baseball, the 76ers in basketball, and the Maple Leafs in hockey. If an 18-year-old player wants to sign with a certain team, and that team also wants him, then why can't they just sign him to an entry-level contract? In Europe, players start playing with the team's academy before they're uh, 10 years old, and either they get released before they're 18, or they stay in hopes of one day making the first team. In America, the teams don't develop the player, they just pick talents off a rack like they're at a clothing store. Number two, the jerseys. In American sports, each of the four major leagues have their own uniform supplier, while in Europe, each team has their own kit manufacturer. This allows for teams to get the jerseys they want rather than looking like a prisoner's convention. Number three, college sports. It's nothing against the NCAA here, but it's the fact that the NBA and the NFL force their players to play college sports. Sorry about that. Actually, they aren't forced to play college sports. However, they are forced to wait uh, some time before, after high school before entering the draft. Now, some of them do play overseas, like in basketball, but in the NFL, there's no real option outside of college sports. And in some instances, college basketball is better than um, professional basketball overseas, which is basically a volunteer position, plus taking classes that you're not actually attending. I'm sure students at bigger schools like seeing future professional athletes on their campus, but smaller schools are just fine with athletes that actually like being students. Number four, promotion relegation. This element adds a lot of excitement at the end of the season. Which top three will earn promotion to the top tier, and which bottom three will be sent down to the next tier? This also creates the opportunity for teams from small markets to reach the top level, such as Bournemouth and Burnley. The only example of this in American sports is the Green Bay Packers, who were the only small Midwestern team to stay in the NFL as the league progressed in the middle of the 20th century. Number five, no salary cap. You might say that the salary cap provides fairness and prevents big teams from spending lots of money on their payroll. Well, the problem is the salary cap essentially forces every team to spend the same. So the teams that tend to spend less will be happy to take on bad contracts from bigger teams just because they have the space. Just look at the Arizona Coyotes, who have taken on the contracts of Chris Pronger, Pavel Datsuk, and Marion Hossa in recent years. It's easier to work with what you actually have. Just look at Leicester, Burnley, and Southampton, and even in baseball, which does not have a salary cap, the A's and the Royals, who have found success despite having a low payroll. In summary, the American leagues are more of a monopoly, while in Europe, the teams have to make it on their own. It's up to themselves to survive. While although this may allow certain teams to become essentially monopolies like Barcelona and Real Madrid, it still makes it better when a smaller team upsets them. If you'd like to know more about this topic, then I suggest you go check out John Pronich, who is the host of the 343 podcast, and he also heavily criticizes uh, the U.S. Soccer Federation on Twitter. Now, I do realize that there are some downsides or weaknesses to European sports, and I'll address those later on on this channel. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you wouldn't mind, please click uh, the like button and subscribe. See you next time.